I go about things pretty much without a plan. So on a random evening I decided to get out this old CRT television that I got a while back. October of 2020 to be precise. I wanted to see if it still works because I never tested that. It's the only television that I have in this form factor with a dial to change the channels. It came with a TV game. I don't even remember where I put that, but it was incomplete so I couldn't test it back then. I'm worried if this TV will function since it seemed to have some loose parts. Also I hear something rattling inside. I fear the glass of the electron gun might have broken, causing the rattling sound. If the electron gun is broken, opening it might not even be needed, since I will have no way of fixing that, since I have no spare electron guns laying around. I shined the light through the top cover to see if I could look inside, which I couldn't. So before we test it with some power, I will have to screw open the case. To be safe, I will be putting on some gloves. So I unscrewed four screws, which was pretty straightforward. More rattling noises. It came apart pretty easily. Luckily the electron gun seems to be intact. Huh? Some weird red balls it appears. I don't know why, but I immediately sort of had a feeling what these little red thingies might be. More on that later. First I want to vacuum them all up. And take them out of the case. They were everywhere. So what is this? Well, my first assumption would be to say that this is rat poison. But why there is so much of that in this television, I don't know. Maybe it could be something else. I hope it is just some weird harmless or packing material. Before we get into more investigative journalism, I wanted to dust off the mainboard a bit more. I put on a mouth mask for that and, and tried not to brush too hard, making the dust go airborne. Good. Let me set the stage for some very in-depth investigative journalism. How did the poison end up in the television? Sounds like a question in a crime show, but this time it is asked on a little retro amateur channel. So that television probably had a good life serving its owners for probably a couple years before it suffered the fate that many home appliances have to face. Either the attic or a shed. Well in this case I suspect the television ended up in a shed in the yard. Probably after a while rats started showing up to the shed looking for food and a dry spot to hide. This probably got noticed by the owner resulting in them getting out some poison in the form of the red grain like substance. One question I cannot really answer though is the question of how the grains ended up in the television since the vents of the television don't seem white enough to fit through the grains. Why would you want the grains in the television, since the chances that a rat will be hiding there in this cramped television are slim, I think. This all of course going off my assumption that the red grains are rat poison. Other suggestions of what they are are welcome, of course. This reminded me of the sort of dangers you face when opening old electronics. Dangers, of course, you can prevent by taking the right steps in protecting yourself. Steps I'm not too good at myself, to be honest, but when you open old electronics, you should be careful in handling, for instance, asbestos covered wiring, or what I find even more scary, weird types of dust. In my pile of projects, I have a computer which I would prefer to test with a Geiger counter, but that story is for another day. I looked up the safety data sheet for one of the brands of red grain red poison and saw its toxicity levels. They were the following. Based on the LD values, which show the dose required to kill half the members of a test population after a specified test duration. Never expected I would be discussing poison on this channel. Back to the now mostly red poison breed television. Here's the main board, which looked interesting. 
we see some caps and potentiometers and a transistor. I cleaned the potentiometers with some contact cleaner and twisted them some to clear the oxidation. I put back the board and vacuumed my workshop, cleaned the inside of the back cover, then cleaned my worktop again and reinstalled the back cover. Moving on to testing the television. At first the television displayed nothing on the screen, not even snow, but the tube showed something when you turned it off, and we have sound. Then I remembered that the brightness and contrast knobs were on the side, so I twisted those and finally got a display out of the television. Then we had snow. I wanted to reconnect this UHF adapter to the back of the television. I connected this car to RF adapter and composite to HDMI together, and then connected it to the television. Had to look around a bit to find the signal, but after some twisting the knobs a bit, I saw my computer displayed on the television. Let's try some YouTube. I played the last episode of Computer TLC with the ginormous laptop. My little doggo Betsy. I also played some old commercials, which always look fun. Anyways, an interesting experience of weird stuff hiding in a nifty old television. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.